I'm Rob LeCurie, Senior Editor at Gold Derby, and I have the pleasure of having four of the best production designers on planet Earth with me today to talk about their films and, of course, production design, generally the secrets of the art. Um, with me today are Molly Hughes, production designer on 13 Lives, Kurt Beach, production designer on Till, Jess Gonshaw, production designer on White Noise, and Peter Costco, production designer on Women Talking. Everybody, thank you for joining us today and welcome. Um, my first question is this. When you look back as artists in the field, do you hold a certain film up as the gold standard in production design over the years, perhaps maybe as you're coming into the business or just something that you think is just the most amazing production design you've ever seen? Maybe it inspired you. Maybe you just think it's amazing. Molly, I'm going to you first. What say you? You know, I had, I'm, I'm slightly biased. I had a good fortune of working for Stuart Craig as an art director for oh. a decade. So um I would say any number of his films. Chaplin was one of, I think, a beautiful film that he did. Uh, but there is um, a Bo Welch film called The Little Princess. That's oh, probably man. one of my all-time favorite production design films. Um, that uh, I'm also a big fan of Bo's work over the years. Yeah, stunning work. Yeah. Bo Welch as well. And Stuart Craig. Um, what about you, Jess? Um. I, I think uh, Dr. Strangelove, I, I don't know, it's like, you know, all the Ken Adam, like all of that, I love all that, that stuff. I just love like big shapes and, and shadows and color and lack of color. So I I think uh, that, that, that I, I always draw on that Ken Adam stuff. Yeah, that's pretty special. Um, Kurt? I think uh, the first time I sort of became aware of what design can do might have been rear window. Um, mm. Just with the idea of having a, a single really evocative set that, that tells the story of the whole world. I thought that was amazing. And I, I hadn't really ever considered that. And, and I think that uh, that really got me excited about it as, as an idea, as, as design having power, you know? Absolutely. Uh, and Peter? It's hard really to think of one particular film. Uh, I mean, there's so many. I mean, yeah, like uh, the, um, um, I think that there's uh, a lot of film, you know, I, I, I guess when I first started thinking that, that there's something out there called production design, uh, you know, it was a time, I, I think of the films that were really resonated with me then, you know, it was uh, my late teens and uh, going to things like uh, um, seven and a half and an American or eight and a half, an American friend and network and Rocky. All those were kind of in the same uh, probably few months. And yeah. um, there was something wow. about um, that time and that age and, being exposed to different things, you know, like uh, historic Euro European art films, kind of like grittier, more contemporary things. And, um, but I guess all of them, you know, there was an element of, you know, fantasy and reality and all those um, films that, you know, like in that, in that brief period kind of um, resonated, I suppose. Yeah. You know, Brazil. Brazil too. Oh, Brazil. Yeah. That's always a classic. Yeah, you can keep us here all day doing this. Yeah, I love that's good. Going. <laughs> it's like I do Bouncing, this with... ripping off of each other. Yeah. I know, right? But it's so true because, like, I've got I'm such a nerd for composers and production designers. It's just something that, and, and cinematographers. It's just uh, you know, growing up uh, watching films and now writing about films, something that I'm passionate about. Like, I think back to something like Jan Rolfs's work on Gattaca. Yeah. That just blows. Oh, yeah. my head. And, and of course, you know, Blade Runner and all, uh, uh, obviously the fantasy elements uh, excite me. And I just wonder then with, with all, all four of you, um, it sounds cliche, but is it harder to do contemporary as opposed to period slash fantasy sci-fi or it just really just depends on the director you're working with, Kurt. Like, what's what what what? Where do you generally gravitate towards when if you had a choice? I'm gonna just give you the really nerdy answer and say that I approach every project as if it was a period piece, right. and try to tell story and backstory no matter what genre 
I'm in. And I think I, I learned this coming up on really big kind of Hollywood fair with the Star Trek and Transformers and Mission Impossible and you know all those all those big ones and and things that that are not necessarily um, you know realistic on their surface. You have to you have to still give them a story that makes sense. And I think that's that's how I find my way into into stuff. Yeah, that, that makes a lot of sense to me. But like Molly, for example, you know, from Harry Potter to something like I'm thinking of ending things very different. And now you're then you created these amazing caves. Like what's what's more challenging? Or again, it doesn't really matter the genre. I'm I'm thinking about it. Somebody said something about or you, I guess you mentioned it. It really is about the director, I think, for me. You know, I I worked with David Yates on Harry Potter, but I just did a contemporary, a very contemporary film with him that I just finished. And it was the same enjoyable, thorough, design heavy process uh, again, but it was a contemporary film, you know, so he really champions the art department. And I think with Ron, we did a really gritty, realistic film with Hillbilly Elegy. And then we, we did this um, film all about this, you know, claustrophobia and suspense inside these caves. And the approach is the same with him. It's, you know, the research and the thoroughness and the collaboration. He's such a collaborator, you know, that it, for me, it's really the process is dictated by who you're working with. I worked with Charlie a couple of times, uh, Kaufman, and it's, you know, a totally crazy, inspiring process with him. That's totally, but it, all three very enjoyable um, processes. Yeah. So and, it, yeah. for me, it doesn't really matter if it's contemporary or, or period in that way. I guess, Peter, for you, it would make, I mean, you you go from something like Rocky Horror to like the complete opposite in women talking, and they're both difficult in their own way. But what do you think is the key for you when you are signed into a project? What really excites you? What is there a particular genre? Well, I guess what really excites me is... Um, Kind of immersing yourself into this world and it doesn't matter if it's a world of fantasy or you know a world of um you know uh, uh an austere uh, religious community you know just kind of uh um you know uh, doing the research and um pulling together uh, references and source materials and then getting um uh, combining um all that in creating these worlds where you're, you know, balancing, you know, like the big picture and the tiny details and, you know, being um, uh, consistent to both and having elements that run through both and that um, support each other. Uh, Cause uh, yeah, I think that the, uh, the prep and the research um, is uh, really important and a really um, crucial part of the whole process. Yeah, and, and Jess, you've worked with the Coen brothers on so many projects and we could talk about that for hours alone and 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 so different and so and period. But the one that I was um pausing just to, to marvel at was like something like Inside Lewin Davis, where which is contemporary, generally speaking. And so for you, I, I guess what's the what's the answer to the question? Do you have a particular genre that you excel at or it doesn't matter? Um I mean it doesn't matter. Um I don't know if Inside Lewin Davis you would call that contemporary. That's uh, true. Uh, yeah, nineteen sixties uh, true, true. village. But whatever moves the story along, and you hit the highs and the lows, and you know, cliche, you give a voice to the things they can't talk, which are wall colors and shapes and furniture, like all of those things. So I, I gravitate towards, um, you know, a good story, and, and how can I help it? How do I identify with it? Is there something I can? I feel like I can. I can. I can give it to it. And there's like so many, you know, we all do like all the research and the art departments are pinned up in the wall and there's like, you know, every picture, everything. But at some point for me, I just got to let that go and say like, okay, there's what's right for the period. Um, yeah. But then there's what what's right for the movie. You know what I mean? And I'm not yeah. trying to change history at all, but I, personally, I don't like, you know, um, I'm not, I'm not such a, uh, um, you know, I don't adhere to just, you know, you have to, you have to, and I mean, after all, you're, you're watching a, a movie, you're watching a, an entertainment, you're sitting in a seat and, and, and watching something. So I'd like to take, you know, take a little bit of chances here and there, but I mean, the, the, 
the the contemporary and the and the period stuff, you know, that it's has its challenges in own way. The future is is the hardest because <laughs> we have nobody's seen that yet. So that's yeah. the hardest. The fantasy, those are the hardest things to come up with. Yeah, I can imagine. And in fact, it brings me to my final question just briefly, and that is I spoke to a production designer once, a really acclaimed one, and she said that in creating the look and feel of the film, sometimes she's terrified that the work will come across as a pro as proppy and just as a set. Um, so when designing and constructing a film's physical space, um, how do you, Kurt, overcome that, that inherent artifice that you are creating to make it something authentic and lived in is that the hardest part of your job i i'm i'm teaching a class at nyu right now so i'm in this sort of mode of of analyzing what we do and i think um what i'm trying to find is the the middle of my venn diagram is authenticity story and visual content and trying to serve all aspects of that for a design and for the film and try and find that sweet spot where you know you're you're serving the script um loyally everything has to be real but not like jess was saying not too real you don't have to adhere to every single real thing that happened and you know this is this is what you're dealing with when you're doing a historical film too and you also have to have a visual content that is rich and and makes sense for for what you're constructing. So it's it's a battle for sure to try and find your way into the middle of all of those things. Um, mm -hmm. But that's where the joy is. I think that's where the fun is in the process is trying to trying to land that that plane. Yeah. And Molly, what do you think of that sweet spot and just in between artifice and authenticity? I actually think um, so much of it depends on your cinematographer and your relationship with your cinematographer. And mm -hmm. it's really important to keep that relationship solid so that you can work together to uh, really, you can you can really help guide, you know, the lighting of your sets and the way that they're shot and help that process. You know, um, Sayampu and I work so closely on this film because uh, we were both like, we've got to, how do we make sure these caves look real? So he was such a big part of the process of, you know, we'd paint them a certain way and turn the lights off and put a flashlight in front of them, or we did in, uh, numerous tests underwater. So, and having that collaboration with your cinematographer is really important so, so that you can, you know, maintain the authentic look that you're looking for a lot of the times. What are your thoughts on this, Jess? Yeah, I um, I think um, well, uh, Molly just touched on it. I, I think you had, have to be, um, just you know, in, in sync with the other people making the movie. Uh, you know, we have to have to be a clear understanding. If you if you if you've all come up with a concept that you want to, you know, have a common thread through the movie, whether it's a color or you know something like that. I mean, just everybody could have an understanding of of, of what that is. So. Um, they're all working on the on the same thing, and they're all trying. You know, we're all making the same movie. Um, so I, I think that's like a this is like a big thing. I, you know, working with um, the DP certainly, um, and, the, and uh, the costume designer, and our set decorators, and just everybody on the whole, just making sure that we're all working on the same movie. Because sometimes by the time you get, you know, you're gone for a while, and you come back and you're in 10 locations at once and you're going to all these places and you have an idea, but you have to communicate that idea to, to everybody because how are they, you know, supposed to know? And and then there's constant, you know, sometimes it's good. Sometimes you have people dress a set and then, then they go away and the next day another four or five people come. So you actually get like a different sort of mm -hmm. layers on there from different minds. But um, mm -hmm. then to yeah. make it authentic and real, I just think you have to be on the same, try to be on the same page with everybody making the movie. Yeah, that makes total sense. Peter, final brief word from you before we sign off. Well, yeah, there's um, uh, just uh, thinking of um, my experience with uh, women talking, you know, like there's uh, sometimes it seemed that um, uh, the best thing that we could do is, you know, hold back, you know, in, in, to be 
truthful to that story and the sets we were trying to depict, I mean, there's always a tendency um, with uh, with uh, the set dressers to um, add a lot of layers and give the sets a lot of richness. And uh, sometimes um, what we had to do in um, in uh, Women Talking was just pull back and uh, show some restraint uh, to uh, create these spaces that uh, um, were more authentic to the lives of the people we were depicting, you know, and you don't uh, go overboard and fill every corner with something and just yeah. dress in all this great stuff that you found just because, you know, like they found all this great stuff, you know, so it's finding that, that fine balance, I suppose, uh, yeah. uh, because every project is different and uh, the approach to every project is unique, uh, even though you're using the same skills. That's right. Yeah. That, 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 that has to mean easy. something or it could be yeah. distracting, right? Yeah, that's yeah. right. A sparse house would not have worked for white noise, and yet a sparse barn works perfectly for women talking. Um, thanks, everyone, for your time today in your expertise. Beautiful work. Congratulations. You should be so proud. And um, <clears throat> good luck this award season. Thank you. Thank thanks you. so much. All right. Bye-bye.